I'm Andy Greenwood, the Chief of Police, and joining me this afternoon is Sergeant Spencer Fomby to my right and Lieutenant Dan Montgomery to my left. We have seen a major increase in violence and criminal behavior by extremists, regardless of view, in our community and across the nation. Extremists who target First Amendment activities, the events that Berkeley Police Department is committed to protecting, are using new tactics, new weapons, and a higher level of coordination than we've seen in the past. Uh, with a little more detail, on February 1st, a large group of over 100 masked extremists stormed the UC campus, attacked police with fireworks explosives, violently assaulted people in the area, vandalized and destroyed property in South Campus and downtown, set multiple fires, and threw a lit flare into a downtown bank in an apparent arson attempt. On April 15th, dozens of masked extremists entered Civic Center Park en masse during an otherwise peaceful event and ultimately attacked others in the park, as well as police officers, using a variety of weapons, including chemical irritant sprays, explosive quarter sticks of dynamite known as M80s. And in this photograph, you can see an M80 detonating on our police line. Uh, these are Berkeley police officers facing the brunt of that explosion uh, right, um, right in front of them. Watch out, watch out! They also used sticks, bats, bike locks, and wooden shields. We recovered an improvised explosive device also in the park, an improvised smoke bomb in the park. So this is a photo showing the explosive detonation right, right literally um, on our officers. On August 27th, just a couple weeks ago, hundreds of masked extremists arrived on the scene of an otherwise peaceful event which had many more peaceful demonstrators. This event was across from Civic Center Park. These extremists were accompanied by a flatbed truck loaded with weapons and shields. The, please. The photograph please of this, have order as we proceed with the meeting. Public comment will be after the presentation. Please. This, fo Chief this photograph Green. taken that day shows shields loaded on the truck, which were subsequently offloaded to masked extremists. They deploy them out in line. Here's one of dozens of those shields, and there's one right in front of you here on the floor. The shield right here is the exact from the batch that came off of the truck. It is a, a sign on the front, but it is made of plywood, and on the back has rope handles, foam padding added to it, so it functions as a shield. From that truck, the speaker prepared the crowd for violent confrontation, warning that anyone who is concerned about violence should move away. This mass group formed a line with their shields and without, seen here surrounding a person, ignited smoke bombs and ultimately entered the park. They violently moved this person off their line before coming into the park. Members of the group with these shields attacked individuals in the park. In this photograph, you can see a shield being used offensively. In this photograph as well. It's important to note that extremists use chemical irritants as well against others at these demonstrations. Here, this is from August 27th, right across the street at Berkeley High. That's a fascist. Here's Please, let's have order. Let's have order. We will get to public comment soon. And here, pepper spray is being used on April 15th, again in front of Berkeley High School. We've now seen over and over that extremists are willing to bring weapons and shields to the fray and use them against those with whom they disagree. We, your police, are charged ultimately with preserving space so that the expression of First Amendment speech, peaceful or quiet or boisterous and loud, and above all nonviolent, can occur. With each event, we've refined our approach to crowd control with an eye towards both overall community safety and our ability to focus our efforts on arresting specific violent actors within a crowd, people who are committing violent acts upon others. And this challenge brings us here to you this afternoon. These items before you on the floor were gathered after the August 27th, and I think there's one item from April 15th, after the events in Civic Center Park. We've included photos of many of these in our report, but in the interest of a full understanding of the issues, we want you to be able to see for yourself the actual weapons that are being brought to the fray in these events so you can appreciate what our officers in our department are facing and our community. The police department is currently limited to using batons, less lethal projectiles, and smoke and tear gas to confront coordinated groups of extremists 
who have launched brutal and determined attacks against officers and people whom they have determined should not be allowed to speak or publicly assemble. Across the region and the country, the use of pepper spray in large handheld aerosol spray cans is an industry standard tool for the effective intervention in violent crowd control situations involving direct coordinated attacks on police lines. Today's reality, unfortunately, is that we're facing the prospect of meeting a large, armed, coordinated group who are prepared to use explosive shields, clubs, projectiles, and violent attack against police and those with whom they disagree. As it stands now, our officers do not have the tools they need to address this threat. The major gap in their tools has been brought into sharp relief over this year's demonstrations. Our officers carry batons. We have less lethal launchers, but the projectiles are ineffective against the shield, even a smaller shield like you see in front of you from August 27th. After that, we have to escalate to smoke canisters and tear gas canisters, where we risk the cross-contamination effect of a large release of chemical irritant in a broad area, rather than have the option to use a tool that allows us to use a direct amount and direction of force upon specific people. So we're seeking the ability to use pepper spray as an important, necessary, intermediary f form of force, an alternative to tear gas and its broad cross-contamination, and an alternative to the blunt force of our baton strikes. Pepper spray is markedly more effective against those armed with shields, as shields do not give full protection against the effects of directed, focused application of pepper spray. Our item here before you today asks that you modify your policy with respect to the use of pepper spray in specific circumstances when dealing specifically with violent activity in a crowd situation to allow us the use of this tool. Police now are dealing with well-coordinated attacks armed by extreme extremists in Berkeley. Violent individuals and or groups have also demonstrated an interest and willingness to attack police officers and members of the public. The proposal before you this afternoon is to give Berkeley Police a tool that is an industry standard throughout the Bay Area and the nation. To use pepper spray in a targeted way upon specific individuals that are engaging in violent acts against the police or against nonviolent demonstrators, as we have seen happen not just in the city of Berkeley recently, but in other communities. Um, I feel that this is an important tool to give our police to defend free speech and to protect public safety. Let's have a civil discussion this afternoon, and we welcome your input on this important issue. This report is fiction. Terrified to come there, and that the, those people who are willing to put their bodies on the line, they made me feel safe. They made me feel like I could come. And to sit there and lie and say that they are the extremists when the Thank Nazis you. are here in our Thank community, you. Next speaker, they please. are the extremists. Shut them down. Make them leave our Next town. Speaker, please. Thank you. Hello. My name is Karen Ashley, and I work with Showing Up for Racial Justice. We're the group who initially called for this demonstration last month. I would like to say that the portrayal of the demonstration is unbelievably false. And there's no talk of the white supremacists. This, this city would not need pepper spray if there were no white supremacists Thank allowed. You. Next speaker, please. You know, my, my, all four of my grandparents were killed during the concentration camps, and a lot of my aunts and uncles too. The, the way my parents survived is they actually had false ID and hid underground. And that's Give how them. they've survived. They hid underground. So and if your minutes that's yielded, what the Antifa, you, don't have an, you don't have a minute for yourself. That's what the Antifa are doing when they cover their faces, is they're preventing themselves from being violently attacked by these fascists and neo-Nazis who are searching them out, doxing them, and trying to... Um, <laughs> trying to stop the movement against fascism in this country. And these people are not the ones that should be under attack here. These are people who are understanding the need to fight fascism in this country. Trump has unleashed the strong right wing in this country who have f feel emboldened under him. And you guys are playing right into this, those hands when you want to protect the rights of people who are fomenting violence against black people, Muslims, Jews, and others, immigrants, 
that's what these fascists are trying to do, and they have no right to be protected for free speech for fomenting violence. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello. Um, I'm a resident, longtime resident in District 7, and I actually am for the motion on the floor. Thank you very much. I support it because I believe that the police need a measure on how to deal with these types of situations. Right now, they have indicated to you that they use batons. Batons hurt. Pepper spray would be better. Who wants tear gas? Please, have order. I think we need to support the police department, and it is in the best interest of our community and our police <coughs> and those who are disobeying the law. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Fire Sir, please, if we, can, if we can just continue with the public comment. Thank you. My name is Russell Bates, longtime resident of Berkeley. As fascist Americans seem to be enjoying more of a resurrection in this country these days, it seems like no reason for Berkeley to go along with that. It's ironic that the sign on there, the shield is being used as an example of bad Antifa. It says, to all those who fight fascism, you are not alone. That's supposed to make Antifa look bad, huh? How about the fascists that show up with their tear gas masks? their pistols by their sides, their billy clubs, and now they want another weapon like this? I mean, you've got to be kidding me. There is something wrong when the city council feels empowered to give the police even more power. It seems like power right. seeks more and more power and more and more corruption. And when is it going to stop? When is it going to stop? I ask this every single time. When is it going to stop? Thank you. The, what the real question is, what the hell were they doing at these protests? That's what should be examined. On April 15th, they simply disappeared and allowed the protest to go on and the violence to go on for hours without a police officer there. Why was that? That's the question should, that should be answered. Why is it that when they were, they were extremely aggressive against Black Lives Matter when they protested? Why is it that the Berkeley police are using four, six times more regularly against African Americans than against other people? Those are the questions that should be answered. Why don't they have a body cameras? That's the question that should be answered. Before those questions are answered, they shouldn't be getting any new uh, weapons at all. Thank you. Um, the city should be organizing teach-ins and conversations between various aspects of the anti-fascist movement. The city should not be focusing on Antifa, but on the, fa on the dangers of Nazis. Nazis kill people. We need prudent and reasonable measures, and these are prudent and reasonable measures. Other cities have done it. We are approaching on Thursday a very challenging situation with another nighttime pr protest. The last time on February 1st, there was $600,000 worth of damage and bodily injury. Please, 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 let's support our, our police in a very reasonable and prudent measure. I think our community, and I ask you all as council members to weigh what you think is the, the best judgment in doing that. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Andrea Pritchett. I'm with Berkeley Cop Watch, and I also serve on the Police Review Commission, although I am not representing them today. And you know, sadly, you know, for all, all the concerns that are expressed about Antifa, let me tell you, Antifa is trying to fill in the need for public safety that they feel there is a void of. That's what's going on. And all this, all this propaganda here, where, where, where are the all night? Uh, where's the Bay Stickman's logo? Where are the swastikas? Where's the flags of all these other groups? It's, 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 not, it's not real. This is very staged, I have to say. Um, Sarah Kirshner, resident of Berkeley. Um, so I agree with Andrea that a police solution to a political problem is not a good one. And I feel like this policy and the other ordinances reflect a failure to make some crucial distinctions and then to equate things that are not equatable. So anti-fascists 
are not equatable with white supremacists and Nazis. As someone whose relatives survived the Nazi genocide and were part of armed resistance against Nazis, I do not believe that they are equatable to Nazis. The distinction that then isn't being made is the distinction between free speech that was intended to protect those who were fighting against white supremacy, sexism, and religious targeting, and what is not free speech, but, and not even just hate speech, but is a desire to mobilize people towards the annihilation of other people. <laughs> History has repeatedly showed us that if you do not stand firm against paramilitary fascists, they increase their numbers. That was historically and consistently shown, and the history of anti-fascism has shown that when you argue over tactics, then you weaken your ability to stop fascism. So, I. I find it confusing. I am one of the organizers. I'm with the National Lawyers Guild. We uh, both defended, organized to provide legal support, and we're part of the coalition for August 27th. We were in communication with the interfaith groups and also with the rally. We came together with strong unity. There was 7,000 of us. It is an absolutely false description. I was with the truck the entire time. Those shields, like masks, are being used to protect people who are being terrorized by white supremacists. There are blogs offering bounties on people's heads. To say that those shields are weapons and to line up to defend the right of people who stand with, if they themselves are not self-proclaimed Nazis, is unfathomable to me. It's unfathomable anywhere, but it's very unfathomable to me from the people sitting up there. I, I, it's really disturbing. And I was at the uh, March 2nd and March 15th rally. I was there um, just to hear a few speakers speech, uh, speakers do their spe uh, speeches, and then five seconds later, I was brutally attacked along with my friends by this group. And if it wasn't for the police chief, please. Let's let's, let's not uh, you know cast accusations sorry, against sorry, people. But again, I was followed to Bart, and people were blocking Bart, so I had no, I couldn't get home. And I'm very proud to call this guy. I think this police chief is doing the right thing by preventing um, people from getting um, hit or physically hit and it's protecting me from going ahead and attending these events. I want to attend these events, but I can't because I'm being followed and I'm being attacked. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. I'm in favor. Next, next speaker. Thank make is that this conversation is happening in the context of the rise of fascism in this society, okay? And Coulter thinks that liberals like you guys should be thrown in Guantanamo Bay. That's what she says. She's demonizing immigrants. She's demonizing Muslims. Ben Shapiro, too. Milo Yiannopoulos, too. These people don't care about free speech. They're using free speech as a pretext to get a foothold to normalize fascism on these college campuses and to recruit a new generation of fascist youth into their movement. And the question is, what role are you guys going to play in this? Are you guys going to go down in history? Are you guys going to go down in history like the shameful collaborators? Next speaker, please. Like the shameful collaborators? Like the shameful collaborators? Can I have another speaker, minute? Please. They gave me, they gave me, they gave me two speaker, minutes, please. okay? They gave me two minutes. They gave me two minutes. Yes. Okay, are you going to go down in history like the shameful collaborators, like the Judenrat? Do you know who the Judenrat were? They were the Jewish collaborators with the Nazis. They were the ones in charge of policing the ghetto. Okay, they had a logic. They had a rationale to it. They said, if we collaborate with the Nazis, it will make things a little easier for the Jewish people. Okay, what ended up happening? They ended up paving the way to the death camps. And there have been people who have been speaking very righteously from the historical experience of what actually happened in Nazi Germany, okay? It is not Nazi Germany, it is America in 2017. The fascists are wrapping themselves in the flag, they're carrying the cross, it's a little different. But don't be mistaken, okay? 
Hitler came to power in 1933. The Holocaust has began in 1942. But think about everything that happened leading up to that. They changed the laws. You guys are trying to change the laws. They had the fascist foot soldiers unleashed, the brown shirts rallying in the streets. They had their intellectual operatives like Joseph Goebbels on the much. college Next campuses. Next speaker, please. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, Mayor and members of the Council. My name is Christina D'Eduardo. I'm proud to have been a criminal defense attorney for the last 12 years, but I'm far prouder to have stood with Antifa and the Black Bloc at all four battles of Berkeley. We drove the fascists out. And at all four of those, Mr. Mayor, let me tell you, at two occasions I was hit with pepper spray by fascists. Your police did nothing. On one occasion, I had to take a weapon away from a gentleman who appeared to be a Nazi skin because he was beating someone who was prone on the ground with it. Your police did nothing. I saw them flee at the Fourth Battle of Berkeley. And it's really particularly libelous to hear that see Antifa accused of storming a march when they were asked to protect it because the police had left. Not only is this change in policy, not only is this change in policy obnoxious, it is also ineffective. When we go out, we take our lives in our hands. Your pepper spray will not stop us. Thank you. Next speaker, please. I see uh, somebody else? in the back who yield in a minute. So. Thank you, your lordship. Yeah. Is there anybody else? No, he's been yield. You have two minutes. Thank you, your lordship. So. We have stupid Cal students. We have an idiot chancellor who believes that her gray hair gives her wisdom. Carol Crist is an idiot. Sorry, Carol Crist. And me as well. So the speaker has four minutes. Thank you. My name is Sansara Taylor. I came out from New York City to be here today because what happens in Berkeley is setting a precedent for the whole country. And I want to say there's a lot of talk of extremists we just heard, but zero mention of the extremists in the White House who have sanctioned white supremacy, who are terrorizing our Muslim and immigrant communities and brothers and sisters, who want to send women back to the back alleys without abortion rights, who want to send LGBTQ people back into the closet, and who are terrorizing the world with the threat of nuclear weapons. And I want to say the fascists who have been coming to Berkeley, who are coming this Thursday, Ben Shapiro, after him, Milo Yiannopoulos, Steve Bannon, Ann Coulter. These people are targeting Berkeley because targeting Berkeley is part of reversing everything this city has stood for, the legacy of the 60s, the fight against white supremacy, the fight against the repression of LGBTQ people, the fight against unjust imperialist wars and aggression. And they're targeting Berkeley and they are spewing, not free speech, not things that advance intellectual discourse and dialogue, nothing that deserves a platform in Berkeley on any campus. White supremacy should be a closed issue. It doesn't advance discourse. Any more than giving a platform to flat earthers or creationists advances scientific discourse. These should be settled questions. And the fact that you use the cover of free speech that the chancellor, Chris, that the mayor here, that the city council is entertaining more police powers, what's actually happening is fascist right to spew toxic white supremacy, to normalize fascism and, mis and misogyny is being protected in the name of free speech. It's being protected by a police state perimeter on Berkeley campus. Unprecedented suppression, including a lockdown of Sproul Plaza, the center and the home of the free speech movement, which was a movement that stood up against white supremacy, that demanded the rights of students and others to fight against institutional racism, not the right of fascists and racists to come and spew their poison and have it normalized. And to use the cover of free speech, it's Orwellian, to say that you're gonna give more powers to the police. What you're actually doing is suppressing the rights of the protests, you're suppressing our right to speak, our right to assemble, our right to protest, our right to do this without fear of government repression and violence. You say you act like you're afraid of the protesters. Really, you're afraid of Trump. And I understand. He's tweeting. He's threatening Berkeley. He's saying he's going to defund the school. And so you are collaborating. You're collaborating with the fascists and creating a police, sto police state repression. That is unacceptable. There is no place for collaboration in the name of humanity. We must refuse to accept a fascist America. We need to stand up and say Thank no. Thank you. 
the specific authority that we are providing the police department if we adopt this motion this, this evening is police may use pepper spray upon specific individuals within a crowd who are committing acts of violence upon police or others. Only if they are committing acts of violence on police or others. For no other reason can police use pepper spray in a crowd situation. That is what we're proposing this afternoon. And I want to say, you know, there have been a number of comments that have been made, and I really appreciate people coming out and providing your perspective. Um, people referenced uh, to the reference report about extremists. We have seen extremists on the left and on the right in our city. That is the reality. That is the reality. And so we need to make sure that violence is not allowed by anyone um, who wants to come out and wants to demonstrate and stand up to people. Please, please, out of order, we have the floor. Fantastic. Please clap. Because you'd be in jail. By the end of this evening, I'm going to be blamed for everything. Why not? You better believe it. Both sides. Subscribe to Very Fake News.